when I was working at the applied uh, geochemistry research group at Imperial College, and Tony was a visiting professor. Uh, he first he used to come through there three or four times a year, and whenever he did, it was like a whirlwind came through the place. Uh, he would give a lecture to uh, the staff and the students, and it was always standing room only. It was uh, it, it was quite a mover and a shaker. Um, at the time, Tony was uh, fascinated by the benefits of, of doing geological exploration from the air, using aircraft or uh, fixed wings or helicopters. And I don't think anybody else would have come up with the idea of using aircraft to collect geochemical samples, but Tony did. And there are many pictures of peculiar looking aircraft with uh, aerodynes on the outside and um, uh, collection tubes underneath of helicopters that got dragged along the ground and would kill cows and, <laughs> and, and collect the samples. Uh, even when the samples came back to the lab, the, the originality followed them. Uh, the, the samples were collected on a sticky tape and the tape was unwound uh, back in the lab and a laser would fire from underneath and create a stream of particles which were carried into a plasma spectrometer and so you could you could analyze for 30 elements every eight or ten seconds combine the data with the fiducials and produce a geochemical map from the air i joined barringer uh it was barringer geosystems was it or barringer i don't remember that it wasn't barringer research anymore uh, he, here tony had asked me to join the uh um, the company when I finished my PhD in 1979. Uh, I worked with Tony for several years on geochemical methods for oil exploration. Again, it's one of these things that most people don't give, don't give any time to, but in actual fact we managed to prove indisputably that oil fields leak and there's an expression of the surface that you can, you can, uh, um, that you can detect. Uh, some of the some of the work we did uh, was so we did some surveys for British Petroleum and they were so impressed they paid us two million dollars in cash to uh, find out how we did the analytical method. Tony was also involved in doing uh, airborne geochemistry offshore to look for oil slicks and uh, developed the laser flora sensor and um, uh, a capillary wave damping system to look for the oil slicks. The, the oil companies were very conservative and reluctant to consider the idea of using geochemistry. And, um, but nonetheless, we did surveys in Zambia, South Africa, Australia, Ireland, United Kingdom, United States, of course, and Tonga. And the Tonga trip was particularly interesting. Um, we, the, the king of Tonga uh, was very interested in what we were doing because he was excited about the idea of finding oil in Tonga. And um, we had a plane that was flying uh, flying over the, the sea between two islands. And um, uh, there was something wrong with the radio, so the only way they could communicate was by throwing messages out of the aircraft. And it was a big in the sea. The king, the king lent us a Royal Tongan motor torpedo boat to go out and do some sampling. And the idea was that uh, the plane would fly over, look for oil six, and then I would use this special uh, glass, treated glass wool to collect the oil slick and bring it back for analysis. Well, the plane found an oil slick, and uh, uh, I tried to reach up the side of the boat to get the sample, but it was it was too far down. So you know, it was Tonga, it was warm. So I jumped in the water and was taking the samples there. And then I noticed a couple of shark fins doing this. <laughs> it turned out it was an oil stick, okay, but it was fish oil. And I jumped into the middle of a feeding frame. <laughs> so I jumped out again. Um, I worked with Tony for about 10 years um, uh, until he retired. And then not, not long after that, I kind of retired myself and moved to an orchard in Oregon for a while, so I fancy being a farmer. It turned out that uh, retirement didn't suit either of us very well. And Tony started another uh, another set of projects with uh, funding from the, one of the world's largest mining companies. And uh, I joined, I came back down here in 1997. 
I can honestly say that that work was more fun than anything else I've ever done. Uh, it was full of ideas, doing geochemistry and geophysics, and it was uh, it was a good time. I, now I look at my watch and say it's four o'clock. Oh, there's another hour to go. There I used to look at my watch and say it's four o'clock and say, great, I've got another two and a half hours before I need to go home. It was uh, it was pretty good. But there are there's some other things as well, non geological things that Tony. Uh, Tony was involved in. Uh, Ken has already mentioned the explosives detectors, the ion scan systems at the airport, as are now the, the gold standard for explosive detection in airports. One of the things that I don't think many people do know is that um, the system that NASA uses to, de to map the ozone hole uh, every uh, uh, Antarctic winter uh, was based on an idea from Tony. It was a throwaway idea, and said to said to uh, the um, uh, said to NASA, "Why don't you try correlation spectroscopy?" And uh, they did. So Tony is the brains behind it. And there's one other uh, instrument that occasionally gets into the news. Uh, Max and Helen is being monitored for gas eruptions, and Tony developed the correlation spectrometer, the COSPEC, which is used to. Uh, um, measure sulfur dioxide in the fumes coming out of the volcano. Apparently the ratio between carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide is a precursor for uh, eruptions. So Tony's, um, Tony's hand has reached many places. Uh, I can honestly say that I've never had more fun than when I was working with him, and uh, I kind of miss it. <laughs>